Good evening and welcome to Law Seekers Thought Newspaper Analysis for the 27th of June 2023. So today we have one editorial article which has been taken from the Indian Express and is titled The Climate Lawsuit Against Delta Airlines. For the second and the third segment of the day we will have the news update and the legal news. So for today's article which we have about the Delta Airlines and the climate lawsuit regarding it we have to first know what delta airlines is or more importantly why delta airlines shot up to the fame now in 2020 delta airlines had claimed that they were the world's first carbon neutral airline what do you mean by a carbon neutral airline they basically stated that the amount of carbon emissions that was happening because of them the same amount of carbon emission was being removed from the atmosphere through their efforts hence making them carbon neutral they also touted the fact that they had invested an impressive amount of 1 billion dollars on carbon removal procedures now the veracity of these claims after 3 years are under scrutiny as per the lawsuit filed by mayana barin so what is the subject matter of this lawsuit The firstly the lawsuit accuses delta of misleading its customers the lawsuit also points to glaring loopholes regarding how the carbon offsetting process has been shown the reductions would have happened regardless of delta's involvement is what the lawsuit claims now how does this happen so let's say the delta airlines have come up with a carbon removal procedure and they state that we have invested this amount this much amount of money in order to remove carbon from the atmosphere but upon closer inspection we find that it's true that maybe delta has invested that amount of money but it's immaterial because if delta did not invest that amount of money the carbon removal would still be taking place now a 2022 bloomberg report highlighted that such a reduction plan in loss cost cost to wind farm would have happened irrespective of delta's involvement in the matter now delta was involved in the matter and they significantly contributed in the wind fund but it would have happened even if delta had decided not to take part in the wind fund now this brings us to the very important uh, issue at hand and which is now coming up in focus as we look more into esg that is what the big corporates are often practicing and the same is called greenwashing now the offset market has often been criticized for appealing to climate consciousness without making any real effort or impact and this is known as greenwashing the other issue with greenwashing is that big polluters keep polluting while finding cheaper routes to offset pollutants now if you were to think that yes delta airlines are claiming that they invested 1 billion us dollars on remove on carbon removal procedures is that not a lot yes it is but if you go forward and calculate the amount they would have to spend in order to get fuel which would release lesser carbon emissions or actually invest into r&d to come up with a uh, with an electrical propellant that would help the flight flight business for delta to continue that would have come up in trillions of dollars and here delta was getting away with it just by spending 1 billion dollars and this is only because the country which we are talking about is a developed country what about countries like africa or india or even countries like sri lanka and bangladesh which are heavily in debt how do they adhere to their carbon budgets and this is the issue here that while these bigger polluters and bigger countries as a whole keep polluting and find cheap routes to offset pollutants the low income nations continue to struggle with their carbon budgets it also means additionally removing ca- removing carbon emissions from the atmosphere now when we say carbon neutral airline or a carbon neutral car we are essentially talking about the line the or the amount of carbon emissions that's coming from the manufacturing and usage of that line of car and the company doing something that removes that extra amount of carbon it is not replacing the amount of carbon that is already in the atmosphere but actually aiding in the removal of the excess carbon that's coming out this is not what happened in the case of delta airlines 
Now, if we were to actually ease this out through an example, let's say that Delta Airlines invested in the preservation of a forest. That is a good job that they did. But the question is that the money that they had spent on preserving the forest, was it actually necessary? Was anyone actually going to cut down that forest? And Delta came forward and said that, no, we are going to preserve it. If the same is not the situation and the forest was in no danger whatsoever, then spending a lot of money on the preservation of the forest is an eye-washing of sorts. And that is what the bigger corporates are now being accused of, a phenomenon called greenwashing. Now for the news updates today, firstly, we have Blue Pansy declared as official butterfly of Jammu and Kashmir. The declaration of Blue Pansy as the butterfly of the Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir administration will give added momentum to the efforts of entomologists, environmentalists, and ecologists to raise awareness and support the conservation efforts for the region's abundant biodiversity, coupled with preserving and safeguarding of the environment for coming generations. Butterflies are one of the best researched groups of invertebrate species and are regarded as environmental quality indicators. They are closely related to plants and aid in pollination. Next up, we have a very interesting project by IIT Kharagpur. IIT Kanpur, I'm sorry. IIT Kanpur successfully conducts test flight of cloud seeding. Indian Institute of Technology Kanpur has successfully conducted a test flight for cloud seeding. Cloud seeding involves the utilization of various chemical agents such as silver iodide, dry ice, common salt, and other elements with the aim of enhancing the probability of rains. The project was initiated a few years ago and is headed by Computer Science and Engineering Department of IIT Kanpur. The flight went up to an approximate height of 5,000 feet. It landed on the IIT Kanpur lab airstrip after successfully con completing the test ride. Thirdly, in a proud moment for India, Shrutirtha Mukherjee and Aihika Mukherjee clinch WTT contender title. Shrutirtha Mukherjee and Aihika Mukherjee overwhelmed the Japanese pair of Mio Kihara and Miwa Harimoto 3-1 to win the WTT contender Tunis women's doubles title at the Sports Hall of Ladies in Tunisia on Sunday. The pair thus became the first Indian table tennis players to clinch a WTT contender title this year. For the international news segment of the day, we have India and UAE sign a mutual recognition agreement. The agreement was formally inked on the sidelines of the 141st, 142nd sessions of the World Customs Organization Customs Operation Council meeting held in Brussels. The mutual recognition arrangement establishes a framework that enables the recognition of authorized economic operators, AEOs, from both countries. By mutually recognizing the EEO status, India and the UAE seek to streamline and expedite customs procedures, reducing administrative burden and costs for unauthorized business. The mutual recognition arrangement comes as a continuation of history, historic India-United Arab Emirates Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement, or the SEPA, which was signed between the two nations on February 18, 2022, and officially came into force on May 1, 2022. SEPA is expected to increase a total value of bilateral trade in goods to over 100 billion US dollars and trade in services to over 15 billion US dollars within five years. Secondly, we also have the International Day in Support of Victims of Torture. The UN International Day in Support of Victims of Torture is observed on June 26th to commemorate the day in 1987 when the UN Convention Against Torture and Other Cruel, Inhuman or Degrading Treatment or Punishment came into force. The Torture Agreement, officially known as the Convention Against Torture and Other Cruel, Inhuman or Degrading Treatment or Punishment, came into effect on the 26th of June 1987. This marked an important milestone in the recognition of in recognizing the universal prohibition of torture. A decade later, on the 26th of June, 1997, the United Nations General Assembly officially designated this date as the International Day in Support of Victims of Torture. For the legal updates of the day, we have Prosecutrix was married yet maintained sexual relations with another married man. 
and on this ground the kerala high court quashed the rape fir now the kerala high court in the case of kripesh krishnan versus the state of kerala and nadar quashed criminal proceedings against a married man who was alleged to have committed rape on a married woman justice k babu observed that in the present case the prosecutrix the second respondent was a married woman with children and was aware of the fact that the petitioner accused was also married the court noted that despite the same she maintained sexual relationships with the petitioner on many occasions so this was all for today for pre study materials and tna pdf slides please join our telegram channel the link of which you can find in the description or you can always scan the barcode that is given on your screen don't forget to subscribe our channel on youtube to stay up to date with the coro newspaper analysis as it comes out every day thank you